I'm Larry Brown and here at the 2009 edition of Wolfstock in beautiful downtown Damascata and with me is Sarah Gail Carter who's going to talk about some of these portraits that she does of dogs. Take yes. it away. Well, Tell I me call them color dogs for obvious reasons. Well, maybe they could see this one. Okay. See this one. So I do these dog portraits, and to me, there's something inherently fun about the idea of a portrait of a dog in the first place, so I decided to have fun with it. Okay. So they are meant to look like the dog, and they do, which is why I show photographs, so people can understand that. They're not caricatures, but I play with the color, and I play with loose paint, so they're, they're about energy and personality as much as they are about, you know, a strict image, photographic image of the dog. Wow. So I moved here from Virginia about a year ago, okay. and uh, so I missed last year's wolf stock because I hadn't tuned in but I couldn't not show up this time okay and it's been great fun seeing all these zillions of breeds and you know every dog I see I'm thinking cobalt blue a okay. little little alizarin crimson would work you know it's great. so the wheels are always turning oh, in yeah. your head when you see yeah, one of yeah. the dogs I mean, look go at, by look at these faces I know you know they're just great yeah. they're great and the best part about doing this as much fun as I have painting them is to give them to the people who love their dogs because half the time they cry you know they yeah. just love it sure so sure. it's been lots of fun Okay. Been lots now, of fun. Um, how long does it typically take you to do a painting? Well, if I just stick right with it straight through, it's probably, you know, a day, okay. um, including the background and the underpainting and the underdrawing. You know, first, I, the dogs are painted in oil on a watercolor washed ground, and people can choose or suggest a background based on where they think they might want to use it in their homes. And I do a small size and a large size, and I can do um, two dogs. I've never tried to do three, although someone today asked me about that, so I may may try. Um, but you know, the time has to do with how many more dogs takes longer because it's the faces that take more time. But uh, you know, it's it's about a day's job all put together. Although I generally stage it out, you know, background one day and under sketch one day and then paint and then come back and forth because it helps sure. to get away right, and come sure. back. Right, and you come back fresh on it then. Yeah, too, then you can see it. Right. You know, it's funny how when you stare at something for too long you lose. Right. So if I go away, and generally if I start catching myself thinking too much, I go away. Right. right. So sometimes I'll come back later that day or some next, the next day, but but yeah, it's fun. Well, these are beautiful then. Well, thank, and thank you. Thank you for coming to for Wolfstock well, thank and to you talk for with having us today. Me. <laughs> okay. I appreciate it. Okay, great. Okay. And with me is Dan Martin of the Animal House, who was the driving force behind this. Dan, tell us a little bit about how Wolfstock got started. Well, my wife and I, we, uh, we started uh, the pet education fair uh, five years ago, trying to uh, you know, generate some income and some awareness for the local uh, sh shelters and rescues. Um, you know, trying to you know, encourage rescue, um, you know, because there's so many dogs out there that necessarily, they don't have any issues, you know, that like a lot of people think that there's these preconceived issues of like, well, they've got behavioral, you know, issues, mm -hmm. but there's breed specific rescues, there's, um, you know, and, and they're relinquished for all kinds of problems like, um, you know, just the owner can't afford the dog anymore. Um, are you seeing that more and more with the downturn in the economy? The shelter, shelters are seeing it a lot, you know, and they're starting to get really crowded. Um, I, I know the Knox County shelter. Uh, they're completely full. They can't really accept any more cats. They're putting them through foster, you know, to keep them uh, under control. So you came up with this idea, and again, it was also besides the fact of trying to find animals, that, uh, people that can adopt, but also the education component too. Right, We're trying to educate, uh, you know, educate uh, the fact that you know good nutrition does help, you know, but it's not just a fancy food. Um, it's you know. There's a basic nutrition and a principle behind all of that. And, uh, you know, things from, um, you know, regular grooming, you know, to like we've had uh, groomers do uh, um, seminars as well. Um, and, you know, just try to get as much education in the pet world as possible. And we've kind of exceeded your expectations this year. You want to tell me what the head count was the last that you uh, checked? Last we checked, it's about 1,800 uh, that, that we can count. There's a lot of people drifting in from uh, beyond the gates. So You must just be ecstatic with this number. I, I'm thrilled. Um, you know, we, we, we worked hard all year. We started the day after Wolfstock 2008. And, uh, and we'll start the day after Wolfstock 2009 planning the next one. Okay. 
Well, we plan on being back here to see you next year, and let's hope that that one's just as successful then. Excellent. Good. I hope to okay. have you here. Thanks for taking the time Thank to you. talk with us. Okay, and I'm over here with Cassie from... Pack Life. <laughs> and I see by your T-shirt, it said, Puppies on Products, don't buy a puppy.com. Tell us a little bit about your organization, Cassie. <laughs> Well, we are a, we a non-profit organization. We're formed out of Auburn, Maine, and we just started in May. Um, we took a trip to Best Friends Animal Sanctuary, which is in Kanab, Utah, and it's the largest no-kill um, shelter in the country. And what we did is we went there and we raised about $2,700 that we presented to them during our trip. And we also volunteered at Dogtown for a week. Um, Dogtown homes um, about 700 do dogs that are up for adoption. And so now that we're back home, what we're doing is we're focusing on raising funds for some local shelters and some local um, dog rescue groups and we're also focusing on doing some humane education with some children in schools and also in library groups and different church groups with children just trying to teach the children how to interact with dogs and how to um, approach them and that maybe not every dog is okay to approach because we think that that will help cut down on some dog bites and some misconceptions about dogs so that's basically what we're doing right now in a nutshell. <laughs> it sounds like your mission is more of an education type of thing to educate people about pets and again as you said pet puppies on a product. Yep. G just kind of go into that a little bit about sure. what you do when you go out into the community. We do a lot um, of education and prevention because we think that a lot of the problems that we're facing right now with overpopulation and unnecessary euthana euthanasia is because we don't have enough education. Um, one of the campaigns that Best Friends runs that we support is Puppies Aren't Products and it's to help educate people that there are tons of great dogs in the shelters that are inexpensive, already fixed, um, amazing dogs, and you don't need to go to the pet store anymore to buy a puppy and spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars. Um, that we are every year putting down dogs unnecessarily, that we don't need to be doing that, you know, we don't need to keep making more dogs when we have all these great dogs in the shelters. So this campaign is just to educate people that you can't treat a dog like a product. It's you can't just go and buy it. They're they're irreplaceable. So we're trying to get people in the shelters to check out what they have and so far so good. It it, it made me feel good when you said that we don't have the puppy stores up here in Maine. There used to be a few, but most Mainers tend to get their dogs either from shelters or from breeders, which right. is a lot better situation. Right, and the, the breeding is a good situation um, when they are responsible breeders and best friends, and we do not in any way, um, we're not against breeders, but some breeders do come off and they are um, irresponsible and they're unnecessarily breeding. They, you know, get a dog and Oh, six months went by, we forgot to get him fixed, and now, you know, he met up with the neighbor's dog, and now we get a litter of puppies. What do we do with them? Do we send them to the shelter? And now you have another litter of puppies. So that's what we're trying to focus on is the irresponsible breeding, um, more of the puppy mill okay. situation. You just mentioned one thing. Let's just say that I'm looking for a dog. First, I know you're going to suggest I go to a shelter. But right. if I go to a breeder, what are some things that I should look for? Um, Personally, I mean, we're, like I said, we're not against breeding, but at this point in time, I think there should be a little bit of regulation on there because there are just so many, you know, the dogs are just so overpopulated in the shelters. Um, but some of the things that you would, you know, want to look for is the dog's health. Um, the cleanliness of the facility that you're going to, um, the parent dogs, are they in a good situation? Do they look like they're happy? Are they being treated well or are they just there to keep creating puppies? You know, you don't want to take away from their life either. They're not just around to make puppies because, you know, we don't need any more, <laughs> basically. <laughs> now, if someone wanted to find out a little bit more information, what would be the best way for them to do that? We have a website. It is www.packlife.org. Um, and you can also, you can log on there. All of our information is on there. And you can also log on to www.bestfriends.org to find out more information about Best Friends. That's um, 
the community that we support. So those are two really great resources if you want to find any more information about us. Okay, hey, thank you very much for talking thank to us today and best of luck with your thank venture you here. Much. Okay. Thank you. <laughs>